So, what was the first Olympics you were involved in and what was your role? My first Olympics was the Sydney 2000 Games and I was there as the national racing coach um, and I was involved in, in coaching the 49ers and the Tornadoes primarily for, in the run-up to that Olympic Games, uh, supporting John Derbyshire who was the Olympic manager. Um, and trying to keep things going when he was away on the ground in Sydney. Um, also had to do a little bit of star coaching then, uh, stepping in for Bill Edgerton when he was also a national racing coach employed by the RY at that time. And he was working with, with the match racing, which was a men's event back then in 2000. Oh, right. And what do you remember most from this sort of first Olympic experience? What's your sort of standout moments? from the, the Sydney Games, probably uh, Ben Ainsley winning his gold medal in the laser. Um, fantastic battle there. And, you know, we, as he came back to the dock, we met him at the dock, lifted the boat right out the water above our head, you know, head height with Ben still in it and carried it up the dock. That was, um, that was uh, an impressive moment. And, uh, and actually the medal ceremonies were very impressive. And, in Sydney, we had a great time at the medal ceremonies. Um, Do you there. get quite emotional when people are going up for medals? Yeah, it's, it's strange. You know, you don't when you go when you first go to the Olympics. You don't necessarily, or I didn't necessarily consider myself overly patriotic. But um, when you get involved in in the Olympic Games, it certainly does bring out your patriotic side. Mm. And I remember that when we went to the we went to the meadow ceremonies, which were on the steps of the Sydney Opera House. Um, David Houghton, who was the meteorologist and had been the meteorologist for, you know, a lot of games. I mean, since the 60s. And uh, and Richard Russell, who was there helping him, who still does some work for us in the background, they uh, worked with me, <laughs> and they they got some weather balloons which they filled with helium, and we took these into the into the medal ceremony and we suspended the union flag underneath the ceremony so and then let them out on strings so irrespective of how flat high any other flag was at any other ceremony <laughs> there was always a union flag flying higher and uh, it was quite was quite good fun and uh, plenty of other teams have tried to mimic it ever since never to be done the same <laughs> ne never to be done with the same the same uh, level of aplomb lovely <laughs> <laughs> so when you're there as a as a coach, obviously the sailors have quite a lot of pressure on them, but I suppose as a coach you have quite a lot of pressure on you as well in, in that respect. Yeah, I suppose it, that's true. Um, you know, it's, that's part of the job. It, it comes with it, you know, ultimately, you know, the, our, our whole programme is based on winning medals and uh, that underpins a lot of other work that goes on at the RYA. And so, you know, very conscious that if we fail to deliver, it has an impact not just on our games, this you know the Olympic Games that are taking place at that particular time, but but also on the program for the next four years, also on the support that a lot of the pathway programs and the development programs um, have, um, and generally just the you know the respect that the RY carries throughout the world of sport that that maybe opens doors and makes people's life a little bit easier across the rest of the organisation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you know, try not to try not to be in a position where you're, where you're displaying all that or, or feeling that all the yeah. time. Is but uh, managing your emotions. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it can be a challenge. Yeah, I bet it can. <laughs> so we, we've had the coaching years, and then you move the take the move to become Olympic yeah. manager. Um, what were the biggest challenges when you first took on that role? You know, the, t the time, the program, uh, the, the Olympic classes and the world class program was moving through quite a period of transition. We, lottery funding started in 1997. Um, you know, I was part of the program with John Derbyshire, with Rod Carr, with Barry Edgington right at, at those days, you know, with the introduction of the world class program. Um, but it was evolving fairly rapidly uh, up to 2000. 
and then that continued with 2000 up to through Athens. But the, the big challenge with Athens, um, as my, which was my first games as the Olympic team manager, was that we were going and competing in a country where most people didn't speak English, in a language that none of, our, none of us spoke, um, where there were very few accessible uh, sailing accessible sites, mm -hmm. so there weren't very many marinas that you could access or dinghy parks that you could access and we actually had to go and find somewhere where we could sail, somewhere to stay and do all that sort of negotiation and that was fairly tough, particularly in an environment where the culture is completely different to the UK. Yeah. Do you get nervous when they're out racing? So when we've got the games coming up here and they all take to the water and there's no more that you can say or do, it's just them in the water, are you sat here a bit nervous or are you just too busy? Uh, there's, I, actually, there's a bit of both. I think, yes, I am nervous. Um, you know, I'm always wanting to know what's happening and, and following and, and interest in that, but f while fully recognising that once we've pushed them off, that, you know, the, the job's done, mm. from my perspective. You know, that, that is, um, it's their job now. Yeah, there's very little more that we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it, actually while they're racing each during each individual race mm -hmm. um, and so yes you do to a certain extent get nervous but you know it's not something that you know that I worry about on an hour by hour basis no. I think that uh, you know as we go through the course of the regatta if things aren't particularly going the way that we like then at times yeah a little bit more nervous and perhaps more a, little tense. Bit, a little bit more tense <laughs> um, yeah. But we've got a really good and a really tight support team, and we have a, a sort of a buddy system. So uh, there's, you know, there's guys in the team that are kind of looking out for that for me. Yeah. And um, you know, when they observe one or two of those behaviours coming out, then um, you know they'll come over and put a hand on my shoulder and say, "Now's the time to go and have a coffee, or let's go for a, you know, a glass of Coca-Cola." Absolutely. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, we spoke to Rod Carr recently and he, he mentioned about sort of a, a team bubble during mm -hmm. the games. Is, yeah. it, does this exist and sort of who would be part of that and why is it important? Uh, yeah, we, I mean, we have what, you know, what we would refer to as a team bubble. It's about managing the environment, really. Yeah. Um, so it's not a physical bubble, um, mm -hmm. but it, it's it's, if you like, a metaphorical bubble that's going around everybody that's part of the inner team. Mm -hmm. And um, it's about controlling your environment, controlling all the aspects that fall within, within, that, within your immediate sphere of influence. Uh, and the people that would be in that would be all, all the 16 sailors, the, uh, the support staff that we have that are directly working with the, with the athletes. Um, it would encapsulate everything within our accommodation areas and our um, our shoreside support services, the, you know, the performance unit and uh, the medical and, and rehab mm -hmm. space, uh, the the team containers, um, and and actually the team spirit that we yeah. have within the team and all of those things, you know. Mm. Um, so you're obviously a very close knit group. Do you feel quite protective over? Everybody. Yes, I, I do. We, we are a close knit group, and we do work pretty hard to make sure that that's the case. You know, we do have regular team building sessions and try and work on on areas that uh, let everybody understand how we work as a group. Make sure everyone understands what the values of the team are and, and what we mean in practical terms and how that that works. Um, and and yeah, we I think that I do certainly feel very protective of everyone in the team. Um, but I think that actually all the team members feel protective of each other. Mm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that sort of looking out for each other and uh, so it's you're actually a real one, unit, of, the, aren't one you? of the strengths. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's one of the things that gives us something that's a little bit different. You know, that uh, when they go sailing, they sail as their individual boats, either yeah. with one, two, or three people. Um, so that it's very much a singular sport, if that makes sense. Mm. But there are 16 athletes in in the team, and it's about trying to get all those guys working together and supporting each other. So maybe you just get a little bit of extra, um, you know that that you know maybe it's you know like we in football people talk about you know what the 12th player and 
yeah. the crowd being the 12th player, you know, can you get that little bit extra of everybody working together that, that, that just allows you to be in your best, best form yeah. come games time? Yeah. So of all the games that you've been to, what has been your proudest moment so far? Got to be just, you know, returning home after the Beijing Games, we had our most successful performance, you know, of a modern games. Mm -hmm. Six medals, four gold, I mean, just an awesome performance. Uh, it'd be difficult for any team to, to replicate that. Um, and I suppose that was the, the moment that I felt most proud of. Yeah. Um, I, remember, I remember the last race, you know, the last race we had when the star won the, that final race, won that final gold medal on the finish line. You know, overtook mm -hmm. the last boat within three lengths of the finish line and got clinched that the gold medal. And uh, the guys sailed in, and you know, there was a whole pile of the team were down there, and a, a number of us got ended up getting thrown in the water, me included. <clears throat> and um, we got out of the water, and quite naturally and, and rightly, all the the media attention went back to to in person Andrew Simpson, who'd, who'd won the gold medal at that time, and. Mm -hmm. And just for a few moments, as I had just climbed out the water in my tracksuit, <laughs> dripping wet in, oh, the, in, the, in the pouring rain in in China, and um, I had a, a just for maybe ten seconds, just a that feeling of both the both the feeling proud, a feeling of release, mm. uh, or of achievement, of relief. Yeah. Um, and that, that pressure that you were referring to earlier, um, and actually my legs went weak and I kind of fell to my knees. Um, Just and I had a little all bit, the had emotion. Bit, of, bit of emotional release. Yeah. But it, it, and it, and it, it lasted no more than 10 seconds. And then immediately after, you know, and then it clicked straight back in. Everyone's now been in the water. It is pouring with rain. It is actually relatively cold. We do, these guys do have to go for dope testing. We mm -hmm. do have the boats to get. We do have a number of things that happen. We do need to get them in and get them showered and changed before they get cold. So we the do business need them to kicks do, in. And the business come, came straight back and kicked in. Yeah. But yeah, I did uh, have that feeling of, of release and that, that proud moment, maybe for about 10 seconds. Uh, a after lovely the last 10 medal. seconds. It was, well, it was an interesting 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, the, with the games coming, to the UK this year. Um, do you think it will be a help or a hindrance by having them on home territory? It's actually a really difficult question to answer that. Mm. I mean, in terms of the sport, I think it's fantastic to, ha to have the games here in Weymouth and Portland for the sailing and a, and a London games, you know, an Olympic games. You know, I really do hope that it does inspire a generation and uh, I think people actually realising that, yeah, this is going to be the Olympic Games and it's going to be something special uh, to, for our country. So on that side, I think that it will be great. In a competitive side, it's not quite as clear cut. Historically, being the home games, it was a reasonably good advantage sailing wise because it's quite difficult to get on site uh, to get good, ask, good access to the training venue. But um, here we've actually it's been pretty easy for, for the visiting teams mm. to have good access. So there isn't anywhere near the same level of home field advantage as, right. as perhaps it would have been in, in China or Athens, um, or even Sydney actually for, the, for those home teams. So, and we were very good at working in, the, in those difficult environments. Um, I think having a, a, a really competent, motivated team in a difficult environment it really allows that team to play to its strengths. Mm -hmm. um, where here it's a little bit easier and of course teams have moved on so yeah yeah it's probably a far harder one to call mm. um, that said you know we have got a fantastic team and, and if we can if we can have a great games here uh, and and get the British public behind British sailing then then that's got to be fantastic